Hey guys, it's Shane here from Tank Hunter Ninjas with Josh. Hello again. And today we're asking a very simple question. Should tanks have legs? And a side question to that, can they have legs? Is this functionally possible? So we're going to look at some designs and go into if this could actually work. So from a physics standpoint, is it really likely, Josh? Like... I'm no engineer, but I'm pretty sure this can't, like, this isn't a thing that can happen in real life. Well, we're seeing some pretty interesting technological developments. Lockheed Martin and all that are putting out their weird little robot dogs. Honestly, most of the time when you want a tank, there's mechanical requirements. The size of the track, uh, the weight of the vehicle, the size of the gun. I want to break down what exactly a tank is here. Yes. A tank is a gun that you move in to fight an enemy. And to do that, <laughs> one, it has to move, and two, it has to be protected from it. So you have mobility, usually in this case it's tracks, and armor, which puts together a pretty freaking heavy vehicle. Well, that's exactly right. Now, the problem with walkers is rather than a nice big track which distributes the weight, mm. quite you've got a bunch of size-wise, much, much smaller legs. And yep. that puts a lot more weight on a much smaller area. So for most of the time when you've seen walkers in sci-fi or even Warhammer, the majority of them would just sink into the ground. Oh, exactly. I think someone did the maths of the uh, the Hierophant, the uh, the Titan mm -hmm. for the uh, Tyranids, and they, they figured without some sort of gravity changing ability as soon as it stepped on the ground it would soak like many stories just into the earth yeah that would track <laughs> so i mean i'm all for lightening the load of the hierophant i would like to see it with a series of very large very shootable gas canisters on top of it that lift it up into the sky but alas games workshop i mean kind of like how uh, in the new dune movie with baron harkonnen he's yes. got those yes, anti-grav that's exactly what you need yeah, it's needs... something to make the walker lighter and <laughs> So, yeah, well, we'll get into basically what we look at in the real world. Because, hmm. like you were saying, um, I think who's on track for these things now is like uh, Boston Dynamics. Yes. So, the main thing you see with that is, I got a picture of him up, a uh, little spot there. Hmm. This is the most modern version of him. Uh, so he walks around, uh, he's just got the arm. Yes. Now, you could, as we've seen, uh, put a knife on him. Well, I've seen them with images of a submachine gun on top. No, exactly, you could. Um, I think most people are just more familiar with We them. are living in a nightmare. That's it. You could easily put a gun on these things. They, they have gun drones now as well. But yeah, this is short scale. You've got a lot of... Is there a ratio of how much... What's the gravity to mass calculator? Well, it's a bit complicated because you're also dealing with the ground that you're on. A walker mm. would be able to have a lot more weight on, say, a road than they would a marsh. Yes. So what we're looking at here is the greatest advantage of this is that it's light. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, that's why you can make something with these legs. And the lighter that... The lighter you can make one of these things to its motor thrust ratio, the faster it can go. And when you have something light, it needs to be fast. Otherwise, one solid round or even falling into a pit can spell doom. That's it. That's it. Because they don't make these anymore. They've pretty much stuck with that sort of design. Mm. But they had the um, the big dogs. Big dogs. They, look, these were, like, I watched the footage. They can get a bit faster, mm. but... Like they're big and they're heavy. This yes. is so hard. You watch them go through, and they'll go through some woods. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, this is about as big as they made them. Yeah, absolutely. And you want to know the funny thing is they had something for that. It's called the horse. <laughs> now, funnily enough, this is actually trying to replicate what the horse does. Pretty much. without the horse's innate fear for its own life. It's for carrying people. It's for carrying material. So what it is in this case is this isn't a tank. This is... A transport. This is a logistics chain for anywhere that you can't bring a tank. Now, there's a problem for that. If you can't, if you need to go somewhere where you can't get a tank, they have things like planes and helicopters. Yeah, you can just drop in. Mm. Yeah, it, it's like I guess what purpose? Like you said, it just it's just a, a mount, I guess, to carry stuff for you. Mm. But yeah, you could just 
devise other ways. Like we haven't needed, this isn't something people are desperately needing. Mm. There's, I think, exactly two instances when you would need a walker like this. One is inside of buildings. If you had to, say, ferry a whole bunch of firefighting gear up a tall tower, one of these following up the stairs would make your load a lot lighter. That is true. The, I think the, the firefighting version of the spot, that looks really cool. Mm. That's gonna be great for getting, like, I don't know how well implemented these things are. They're not really here, but they might be in other countries. We can, but hope. That would save lives if you could just have this. But again, it's not really a tank, it's a robot. Yep. But of course it's got the legs. It's, um, it's what you would adapt. Like you would build this guy up even larger and that would be like your tank frame. The second place you could put one of these is like a wrecked city, natural disaster, mm. or zone, what have you, somewhere that you can't move anything much larger than a human through without clearing a lot of rubble away. Yeah, yeah, so the Wildcat, this was like the, the fastest one. So this was going 19 miles an hour. 19 miles an hour. So I show you him at full sprint. Ah, and then it yeah, falls on its face. Um, it's not ideal, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, well, that's the thing. This wasn't even, they don't even, this was in 10 years ago. Mm. They stopped working on this project. I think the, the problem that we're seeing here is it is legitimately too top heavy. It's, it's that there is an awful lot of weight for these spindly legs to move, and it's a lot of motion for these legs to move. It mm. works better if you can imagine muscle over the muscle which can only contract but its weight to strength ratio is very high this is the key problem you have with mechanisms everything has to be run through the joints that's the thing and this is basically a skeleton because mm. everything it's trying to replicate yeah how an animal would move how a person would move and for some reason that's been so hard to do because you can't make an animal move with just bones no. And in this case, the thing that we're seeing that's going to be a problem is this thing looks like it's just about at its weight limit. It's going 19 miles an hour. It is having trouble where it can fall over at corners and trying to stop. And you want to strap armor to this? <laughs> well, that's the thing. You gotta, you'd have to make the legs thicker. Mm. And if the legs are thicker, it's going to be slower. You're going to have to need so much more power to really make it run. Yeah. Well, bear with me on this. You use a tank. <laughs> Yes. No, exactly. If, if you just have, if you didn't have the legs, if you just attached wheels to that power output, mm -hmm. that, this vehicle is going to go so fast. Yeah, we you have be... seen scale vehicles with wheels or tracks move so fast yeah. with better maneuvering than this. And the thing they're showing us with the turning right now, that's a pretty wide circle. And that looks about as low a circle as you can get. It yeah, so that's his turning Cars arc. turn faster, tanks turn on a dime. And even flying drones can just hairpin turn at the best of times. Yep. So yeah, it's while it's neat, while it's it's cool they've done it. I just don't see it ever really being a thing that's needed on a large scale. You don't need these to be large. In fact, everything we're seeing so far with practical applications, you barely need these at all. No, no, pretty much. It's yeah, like you said, if you've got an area that you can't bring a large vehicle, well, you just walk there. Yep. <laughs> And that's that's the thing that we've been saying. There is one set of very effective walkers in all forms of combat that is necessary. The human being. That's we've it. We've got walking down to a fine art. No, yeah, we're one of the best at it. <laughs> so let's go um, into a couple of uh, examples. Hmm. So let's look at the first up. Let's look at the dune crawler. Ah, uh, my bugbear, the dune crawler. Yeah, yeah. I, I direct your attention towards its feet. Yeah, look at that. Because you can get the, you can have it so it has its flat pads. Yes. But yeah, this is the example they give you with the, the tiny points yes. on a sandy surface. You are going to, this thing is going to bottom out on flat ground. It will not be able to move. Yeah. The only thing I'm thinking here is that these legs are designed to dig into the ground so that this thing doesn't move because it is a gun platform. It is not a walker conventionally. No, exactly. It's... There is, sorry, there is one <laughs> instance of any battlefield where legs like this might actually do something. And that is on terrain that is so rough, you cannot run a vehicle on it. Well, that's the thing. So coarse that infantry have trouble and so much air cover that you can't run any kind of aircraft. And that's like, imagine a battlefield that is nothing but craters and rubble for miles. This thing would claw its way through the ground incredibly slowly, but it'd also be the only thing moving. The, the, the counterpoint to that is how, how much elevation could this go before it's like top heaviness 
tips it over. Oh, I think we're about at it in this picture. Yeah, I don't think it can go at a very sharp incline. Because nope. it's like um, during the Siege of Terror, mm. where they had all the night. Oh, it wasn't the knights, it was the Titans. And they're trying to climb up the Himalayas to get to the palace. We learned that hands are useful for climbing. <laughs> and they're just trying to walk up and they're just falling and tumbling down. Someone, <laughs> someone had fun writing that chapter. Oh, that was great. I love that one. That was so good. But yeah, if, if you've got these legs mm -hmm. if, uh, with this high mass, you're just going to fall. It's the train itself that's going to stop you. you mm -hmm. You're hurting yourself. Now, I'd actually want to draw attention to the logistics of this thing for a second. So not counting the turret, because a tank has a turret. But looking at one of the legs, you can see where it's mounted to the central axis. And then you've got one, two, three, four, five, six different joints, all of which have to be powered and applying mass. That's it. So this thing has 24 joints to move <laughs> itself. A tank has an axle. That's it. That's it. Well, it's if just got to rely on these its... fail. If any one of these fail, it's dead in the water. That's true. You just lose one actu actuator. And the whole thing's gone. Yeah, that's it. If uh, No wonder the Mechanicus is the only faction to use it. They're the only guys who wander around knowing how to fix them. Ah, it's true. Because, yeah, you're relying on... Because, yeah, you've got to swivel the base. Mm. That's got to move left and right. And then you have to extend it out, then lower it. Yeah, so, many, so much range of movement. It has to do it under load, and it has to do it quickly to get any speed. Yeah. But you can't deny they're all cool. This oh, yeah. It looks good. Definitely, definitely. Like, I remember when they first came out, and I was like, this is great. Mm. So, yeah, AdMech are doing it. Um, with the Necron one, like you said, that's got an anti-grav thing going on. With oh, it, Necron, with the once you get up into the Xenos, you're starting to see some real high-tech nonsense that's just like, yeah. this thing could weigh nothing. This thing could weigh negative weight. Well, that's the thing. It's made of blackstone, but we don't know how much blackstone weighs. We don't know what they can do with it, even it's, if it does weigh something. Yeah, it's powered by magic, essentially. <laughs> Please write more Xenos lore. We need to know. Well, that's it. But Actually, the other one I do want to talk about with the Admech is... Uh, what are those striders called? I think they just call that iron strider. iron strider. Now, an iron strider, that makes sense to me. You've got... It, it's essentially like cavalry. It moves oh, yeah. fast. It's got... It's high, which pros and cons. Uh, more cons, usually, than pros. But the thing is, looking at it, it's designed to move so fast. Well, that's the thing. You look at its legs and it's... And it's like what we said, it doesn't have much top weight. Mm. The most weight of this thing is in the legs itself. Mm -hmm. Now the trick of this thing would be turning. The fact of the matter is, is that this mechanism in particular, being Mechanicus, uh, hoodoo science, we don't know how to make <laughs> it anymore, uh, is kind of self-driving. It is in fact just like a horse in that it will move where you tell it to and it will figure out how to get there on its own. So it's actually the ideal cavalry because the thing you're riding is like a horse, but, but not made obviously. of metal. Made of metal. <laughs> Slightly more bulletproof. Yeah, no, that is true. Yeah, making bulletproof horses has uh, always been a challenge. Mm. All right, so yeah, that that makes sense. But yeah, the, the tank design, you know, for everything AdMech has been, uh, has been lacking of... They did the time. Da Vinci flyers, and it's all just been terribly silly. Yeah, yeah. No, they they can't get good ideas. So, so yeah, forty k. Like I said, they don't have a lot of it. Uh, mostly, it's in the walkers themselves, and they've got a whole other issue. Um, so, the main other place you see tanks with legs is, of course, Star Wars. Star Wars, love it. Because we we got a fabulous uh, ad ads. Ah, uh, yes. I'd, I'd, these guys are great. Your AT-ATs, everyone loves them. Yeah, they're huge, they're cumbersome, they are slow as a wet week, and you just can't kill them. Well, that's the thing. We saw that in um, in Rogue One, yep. where he, uh, yeah, they are so ter more, much more terrifying in Rogue One. Mm. And this is funny, because the ones in Rogue Ones aren't your traditional AT-ATs. Yeah, they're, they're just cargo haulers. They're cargo haulers. Yeah. Which you want on a, a desert planet, a cargo hauler that's a walker. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I mean, the, the trick was, uh, according to Disney's new canon, this is the older version of the AT-80. It only has the two frontal guns. It actually has a rearward facing gun. Oh, yeah, yeah. That which makes is sense. kind of, you know, an enormous blind spot on these walkers. But similarly, it has a great big open hole in the middle of it that's uh, very willing to be bombarded by a torpedo. Now, talking for the more traditional Hoth ones, which are newer, there's a lot of design philosophy that actually goes into this, and I'm going to... Mm. Spiel here for a second. Yes. So you'll remember Tarkin. 
Yes. Uh, he was basically in charge of military doctrine for the entire empire until he uh, blew himself up by being <laughs> too proud to leave. That involved something which is essentially a terror doctrine. They have to see us coming and they have to know they can't do anything about it. I mean, it's sort of like um, in 40k with the Titans, uh, they, they have the big Titan horns. They yes. let out the massive, um, just that uh, that sound and that's mm. so terrifying. Everyone's going to make the leadership test. Yes. It's, yeah, seeing this is, yeah, you're right, it's a terror tactic. Now, the upgrade they did to this was the under chin cannons now for the most part militarily wise heavy laser cannons weren't on mobile craft they were on oh, like, ships ships yeah. they ship weapons now the other thing that they have is they have defense turrets the rebels had defense turrets on hoth those were turbo lasers so mm. they're basically quasi artillery guns what the rebels were expecting to happen was that the empire would run in They'd have maybe a solid five to ten minutes of shooting at them with long-range turrets, mm. and then they'd come to grips. What happened is the Empire took this basically laser-proof walker and fired first. The rebels, that's why you see them diving into their trenches. They legitimately thought they had a few minutes left. <laughs> and then it turns out, oh no, this giant walker can outrange our guns. I honestly think 8080 all-terrain armored transport is a misnomer. This is an all-terrain assault transport. It's designed to walk face first into any defensive yeah, line you can imagine and not care. Yeah, that's the kind of thing. It's it's transport in a sense, but if you didn't have guys in it, it's still going to do its job. You yeah. can just leave them in the back. It's, it's still like, going to do a job. <laughs> it's like 40K's Land Raider, but with a few really foolish decisions. Like, everything having laser weapons means you have a hard time putting shots down range where they drop. You can't shoot over the horizon. No, no, exactly. You're always shooting in a line. Yeah, so to increase the range of your weapons, you put them up higher. Now, for mm. most people, this involves strapping them to a ship and firing from orbit. Oh, yeah, doing some strafing run, Not yeah. really an option we have here, so they attached it to a nice tall walker and decided to heck with it. Let's just make these things able to resist turbo lasers. Make it like a giraffe with a gun in its mouth. Uh, an interesting terminology and one I can't <laughs> refute. So, I in mean- In fact, there was actually, there were six walkers in the movie and the Attack of Hoth lore-wise back in the original days. There was a seventh. It fell into an ice lake and they couldn't get it out. That'll happen. <laughs> it's, I mean, I, yeah, it'd be very hard to uh, determine whether, no, no, it should be easy to determine it where the lakes are. You just use some like sonar or scanning yeah, or something. But I guess they thought the ice was thick enough. Now, well, the fun part about the all-terrain here Mm. Obviously, this thing is not maneuverable. Well, that's the thing. It, what is it turning like? It looks like it has... It can turn on a spot. Like, the hips can rotate out. The problem is it takes forever to do so. Yeah, that's going to be your slowest part, mm. is trying to turn, like, the front legs in a different direction. Yeah, it, it's an assault gun, basically. Mm. But the thing is, the all-terrain here doesn't mean you can go over hills easily. It means you can put oh, this yeah. thing on the bottom of the ocean. It means... <laughs> And this was in the uh, the Legends canon. Yeah, you could put this thing in space, and it would work. The uh, there's a big shipyard, the Empire's largest shipyard around the planet called Kuat, which has an equatorial ring shipyard. It's mm -hmm. enormous. Uh, at one point, the rebels were there fighting the Empire, and they were there for months because the Empire is just like, we understand you have a small part of the ring; the rest of it's ours. Send in the walkers, and the walkers would walk on the outside of the ring. It just, the rebels couldn't do anything about it. No, well, that makes more sense than um, than the horses on a on a in space. There, look, there's a lot of things that make more sense than the horses. <laughs> yep. But yeah, going to functionality, like you said, it's it's got its purpose. Mm. It definitely does. It just how much power do you have to generate to lift? Because like I say, the feet are correct because well, they're they, big, they have, wide. They are big and they are wide, but they have something in there. They have an anti-gravity generator. Oh, they do actually have anti-gravity. They anti do actually have one. So you have to, to, for us to be able to build this, we have to have science that probably won't exist yeah, exactly. for another couple thousand years. Well, they said that about powered flight, so any day now. Oh, that's it. I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy to think. We've only been able to fly for like... A hundred years. A hundred years. So in the time that we weren't flying to the time now, look at all the advancements we've made. So, you know, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a steep curve. So, yeah, the the ADAT, you reckon it should like it has a purpose. It's doing its job. Its job is narrowly defined by a guy who was more ego than man, well, twisted uh, and evil. <laughs> but Okay, because the other one of that is, of course, the ATTE. Ah, now the ATTE yeah. does strike me as more of a, a World War One style tank. It's got guns pointing in every direction. 
it's got legs that means that it's more capable of moving. And as we've seen in the Clone Wars, we've seen one of these things walk up a cliff. Yeah, that was cool. Like that I said, cool. this this is, yeah, pretty much all terrain. Mm. Um, I like how it's just low to the ground. It's got a lower profile. Mm. It's it's not just a flat, like we see with the AT-AT. It's sort of more of a, like a square. This one's actually got deflective plating. This one's <laughs> less ego, more practicality, with two notable exceptions. As you can see, uh, I don't care if they call it transparent steel, the cockpit's glass. <laughs> yeah, yes it is. And the second is the main gun of this thing is externally controlled by a guy that's not even fully armored. No, he's that's... just sat there. Yeah, yeah, I mean that, essentially you use that gun when you're doing a siege. Mm. That thing is so long ranged, it's when you're going to, yeah, pure is, siege mode. This is an actually an interesting comparison to the AT-80, because the AT-80, the big gun on those was lasers. This is a rocket launch. This yeah. is a recoilless <coughs> rifle. No, exactly. Mass accelerated driver, yeah. Mm. It fires <coughs> It fires sizable rockets and it fires them far. <coughs> yeah, no, this thing is designed to pretty much any battlefield. Mm. You can sort of bring this guy and he's going to do something because you see him patrolling streets. You see him approaching a city to siege. Yep. Um, won't get through a narrow street mine, but no. every, that's why you have combined arms doctrine. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you got to support this uh, in the Bad Batch, they were able to just, they jumped onto it and hijacked it from above. Oh, yes, yeah. so easily. Because it's, it's got that blind spot, it's it's back and it's front, so you you want to make sure it's in its formation. Mm. But, yeah, like you said, it's, it's usable in a lot more scenarios. Mm. Now, the downside, of course, is it's still very slow. It, uh, it's max speed is 60 Ks. 60 Ks? That's what it's got written here, 60 Ks max land speed. Yeah, I know that it doesn't it doesn't feel seem like right. I mean, I I remember them being dropped off on Geonosis back at the first mm. battle, and they they were slow. Like the infantry were outpacing. Yeah, easy. this is probably more buildable in modern times than an at at. Yeah, but it's still like you said. It, when you see how they move, it's a lot of joints, a lot of actuators, a lot of moving parts. A lot of so many moving well. parts, yeah. exactly. But I feel. Six legs is probably more accurate because, yeah, you've got the middle legs, which are the main power you drive. You distribute the weight. You need to be able to turn and you need to be able to keep each of these legs moving in turn. So the main the main legs being the middle legs means that you can move this forwards and backwards about the same speed. It means that you can pivot on a spot and it means that you can keep your powerhouse in the most armored part of the vehicle, yeah, which isn't the cockpit. <laughs> so, yeah, I, re I really like the design of the ATTE. I think it's more functional than an ADAT, -AT, but still. Yeah, look, to it, be fair, it the requires. clones had much better military technology than the Empire did. Well, I guess so, because they were they were trying to win a war, mm. whilst the Empire was trying to keep uh, population in submission. Yeah, whole different style of warfare. Yeah. So what else we got? Uh, the other one I was going to bring up, Iron Harvest. Iron Harvest. Ah, uh, no. Uh, once again, another civilization that can't quite figure out how wheels work. And that is not just one civilization, it's all of Europe. All of Europe, all of Europe hates wheels. I, look, I can't argue with you here, but the thing that I can't quite put together is like, this seems like such an ego project. Europe doesn't have an ego, sure. <laughs> yeah. No, exactly. So, yeah, the main one you see is the, the Isgrim. So, because this is quite clearly a tank, all you got to do is switch out the legs for wheels, and that's a tank. And like looking at this thing, yeah, it, it is literally just a tank, another 10, 15 feet clean off the ground, it makes it easier to hit. But as we can see here, in most of the time frames around about World War One ish, infrastructure well, wasn't great in Europe. No, at least not compared you to don't say. Your, your roads, <laughs> most of your roads were uh, dirt. Sometimes the dirt was compacted, and you had like streams and rivers. These walkers look like they have the the breadth of foot spacing that they can go up and down in creeks. And that's a huge advantage over what tanks could achieve in that age. Well, that, now. I mean, that is true. I mean, the first tanks that came out in- um, Barely mobile. Yeah, in World War I was a case of, um, yeah, they went over a, a trench, you just land, you just land wrong and I was like, whoop. Well, the track, the whole track broke, so I'm stuck here now. Thanks, bunker. Let's or, get on with it. Yeah, that's it. It's like, so, but yeah, 1920 plus is mm. set. Yeah, after World War One. Like, I love Diesel Punk. Mm. I, I love it to death. But um, it's still sort of silly. No, it is. It is, and they have 
special Tesla technology in the in the um, in the game. It goes through the whole storyline of yeah, them trying to keep the secret secrets of electricity and stuff. But it doesn't really explain how they can get this guy to work. No. So like, it like, still has some degree of practicality. Yeah. Now, so this you, one's one of the other factions. Yeah, right? so this is the Polonia one. So the mm. Polonia one, the whole thing with uh, Polonia is they don't have the same resources. They had to sacrifice a lot of firepower, a lot of functionality just for speed. They had to try and... So they're actually the fastest one is Polonia. So you look with the, the I mean, this transport This doesn't look one. like it go particularly quickly. No, this one can't. This is a heavy transport. Okay. But if you look at, like, just the weight of the legs, mm. and that's what it comes down to, because, yeah, you need stable legs, but I don't imagine, like, the amount of engine you'd need to support four legs lifting up and down. Well, in this case, I don't think you need the engine power to support four legs. You need them for two, and a hell of a gearbox. Because if you can, oh, say, yeah. move the... If you had an engine in there that could move two of the legs simultaneously, and then just a gearbox to be able to say, all right changed out now move the other two legs it might be more plausible but like you said they're resource poor i'm not sure they could afford to make a gearbox that resilient no no exactly so if you look here look at the um so you look how his legs are moving mm. like that's that, a lot of range that range. requires a lot of like yeah, each leg is moving independently mm. on the ears grim um because you can see that he's trying to always keep stable yeah and he's he's also because he he's got to go fast. And like looking at it, it looks like. And this one here, the the, the oh, strength. This, this one does not make sense. No, the, the legs are far too like he's he's lower armored. So you, you got to picture that like it's a can. It's mm. a can on legs, so it's it is a lot more lightweight. But even still, yeah, that that thing is. Um, I'll give it props. It's quite maneuverable, but it it's going to have trouble keeping itself afloat if it gets hit with anything solid just like upright it looks to be quite top yeah yeah i mean that's most of the things is either they have legs that are are too small too thin or that are too big mm. so the functionality it's hard to ascertain but uh, i mean like you said they're, they're going for the rule of cool <laughs> which it is you can't deny the rule of cool yeah kai's is one that i feel like sort of feels a bit more like it's, it's trying to balance it out because yeah. it does have those big, thick, defendable legs. Looks like it's mostly engine. And this one it does strike me more of a more of a mobile bunker than it is an out-and-out -out tank. Ah, oh, pretty much. Because yeah, it, did, it has its missiles that come out, so it's got a whole separate arsenal it's protecting. Mm. They've got ideas. It's just whether or not that's even possible in any circumstance. Mm. <laughs> so. Just going by not only, like, yeah, we put all our research, all our money investing into trying to make one of these things exist. Like, could they actually physics-wise? Because I remember when they had the um, the Japanese and they had their big mech and everyone was freaking out because I was like, oh, it was able to take a step. It didn't take a step. It just raised a leg. Yes. It wasn't able to walk. And the difference between taking a step and walking is a, a degree of magnitude complexity-wise because you've got all the weight you have to shift and you have to make sure you don't fall over. No, exactly, because walking is a process of falling and then catching yourself. Yes, at least w when we have two legs, it's a very complicated internal balance process. Four legs, six legs, it gets a bit easier. You can afford to take your time, kind of. Yeah, yeah, the Wotan's pretty neat because he's got, he's got eight legs. Mm. So I feel that... That, that would have weight distribution enough to make it work, I think. It, it yeah. does look very heavy. No, it does. That's, yeah, I think that, that's what Saxony really does. It likes its big, heavy tank stuff, So, which, which is cool. The thing I'd be a bit concerned about, and there's, there's ways around this because we've manufactured ways around this, but in this day and age, the main guns of that look like they would have a lot of recoil. And this thing would probably be safest if it could plant its butt on the ground and then fire its main guns. It looks like if you fired the main guns too quickly, you'd overstress the legs and the whole thing would break apart. Oh yeah, good point. Because yeah, they're trying to hold up. Yeah, you see when it shoots and it has to, yeah. It has to take, literally has to take a step back. Yeah, it has to take the recoil. And it's like eight legs, you can get the weight distribution. Mm. You can you can keep this thing relatively steady as it's moving, but that's also eight times as many instances of having to <laughs> That's if it. one of those goes bad, the whole side could be ruined. Because I'm just thinking, if, yeah, if one of the legs 
like, is busted. You're, you're just dragging around. It's now a deterrent for you. So th this guy's fun because he pretty much is like what you said. So the, uh, yeah, the heavy cannon mech. Mm. So he's just going to plant himself and he just becomes an artillery piece. Yeah, those legs look spindly enough that they can barely move this thing. They would not be able to stand up. No. Like, while mobile to this thing actually firing. That said, the front legs look remarkably like arms. And I think if you could <laughs> apply a gripping force on the feet, this thing could actually climb vertical surfaces to a degree. Most likely, yeah. And that would be horrifying. If you could put a, a, a siege cannon that size up a cliff, it, it could fire anywhere, basically. Pretty much. You're firing straight in the air. You're just becoming a giant ah, mortar. Yeah, there it is digging in. Very yep. nice. So it digs in, and now it's it's an artillery piece. That's actually kind of practical, despite how spindly it looks. Yeah. So and that, that's what would happen if you had feet, to the, feet that had spikes on them. Yep. Just sinks, it just stabs straight at the earth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. So that's about it for the Iron Harvest one, except for the new stuff that came in. Oh. I'll, sh I'll show you a picture of that. So that's, um, uh, this is the, the USA's one. Uh, this is the, this is the Knox. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I, I see they start with a train on the bottom. And yep. then, oh look, this kind of leg can actually work. It looks like it's designed to sink a small distance into the ground, but again, the foot is too small. It also does look like the back legs have their own almost engine compartment just in the leg, which yep. decentralizing the engines, yes, in terms of reducing internal space, no, in terms of your leg will literally just fall apart if it breaks. Yep. That said, that's an awful lot of guns i love how it's it's just it's so top heavy how it's is this thing going to stay up yeah how is it balancing as soon as you push one leg up the whole thing's going to flip over yep god it's, it'd be nicer if it had a bunch of wheels to run on or something no no, no wheels here no wheels here wheels didn't even weren't even invented in america in this in no. this universe so that's fun astounding so yeah we see a lot of a lot of fun stuff but not a lot of things that, that are, can happen. Like none of this is, is feasible or possible in most cases. No. The only time I have seen any kind of Walker-like tech that does work is when you enhance infantry, powered armor, uh, not a mech suit, not that big. You, you want someone something that can help a human lift a heavy weight. Yeah, like they bigger guns. Yeah, those exoskeletons, are, yeah. Uh, they have them around. They're pretty cool. If they we just... can get those to work, suddenly it holds a place where the armored car used to be. It's fast enough, it's flexible in its movement, it carries a surprising amount of firepower, and then you suddenly have uh, a squad of infantry with a logistics chain of a squad of armored cars, and it becomes very expensive. No, that's true. That's a lot of investment to put in, a, in a, just one single soldier. Mm. But um, I mean, what did they have in Starship Troopers? What, what did their mix look they like? They had the Marauder originally. In terms of the book, it was there originally. In terms of the series, it, it wasn't really there until the later movies. But uh, the Marauder is kind of silly looking. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just standard sort of mech suit. Where, um, where do you put the engine is my question. The engine doesn't go anywhere. It, it doesn't fit. Uh, yeah, because that's a cockpit. It's not on the shoulders. Well, it's not in the legs. Unless this thing's carrying a big old backpack they just don't want to show us. It doesn't have it. Um, let's see if I can find a good picture. Mm, nope. nope. I guess it's sort of in the middle. Kind of. And at, at the end of the day, the reason this would exist is the exact same reason an actual tank would exist. Is that the basic infantry of the arachnids would have a really hard time hurting this. But this looks like it actually moves fast enough and is maneuverable enough to avoid their artillery. Yeah, basically you want to, you walk it to act like a really big person. Yes. That's why you have it. Having a walker act like a tank when you already have a perfectly functional tank at home, mm -hmm. why would you go, <laughs> why would you go There's get it? There's no purpose. Yeah, so walker concept in general, yes, it, you know, it has its purposes. You can see it, but just not for tanks. No. So I think uh, we've got that pretty much covered. I think uh, all points have been established and uh, we can uh, call that uh, call this myth busted. <laughs> Very much so. T uh, tank, will it walk? No. No, no it will not. Uh, excellent. Um, oh, yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, let me know what you guys think of it. Um, what uh, what cool designs you guys like? Because eventually that because essentially that's what it is. What looks cool. <laughs> so 
yeah, and if you did have the secret to overcoming its problems, um, you better keep that to yourself. Don't, uh, don't let that information into the world. You don't, you don't want to compromise yourself. No. Don't try and uh, stray away from the status quo. Mm -hmm. uh, excellent. Well, that's it for this, guys. So um, we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.